Welcome to uh, the NZSA on snow. Um, today, on, or this morning on snow, what we're going to sort of go through is how we are trying to better our guest experience in New Zealand. And we believe we can do that through engaging the learner, okay? Engaging the learner with clarity of outcome and through a feedback process. So what, what does that mean? Well, for us, an engaged learner is someone who participates, right? So who asks questions, to, that gets involved and wants to be part of the decision making. So they want to be part of the decision making that helps them, you know, achieve success in skiing, right? We believe that the benefit of this is that if we have an engaged student, someone who wants to participate, then they're going to basically be able to sort of tap into that, that source of intrinsic motivation. That they're going to be driving the learning and then what we need to do is just guide them along that path. So we believe that's, the, that's what we're trying to do to sort of facilitate a really good guest experience. Okay? Um, so what you guys are going to experience this morning, or, or I guess the takeaways that I want you to have from this, from this workshop, is to understand how we create clarity of outcome in New Zealand and how we use our feedback model. Okay? Those are the sort of two takeaways. When we're gonna go for a couple of laps and I'm gonna sort of like talk to you guys and set, set it up. And then when we get onto our last run, I'm gonna try and set up a little experience with you guys where you'll pair up and you'll have an opportunity just to, to try our feedback model and just have a little go at it, try and experience it a little bit. Okay? Perfect, so let's ski all the way to the Gondi, okay? And let's regroup at the top of the gondola. Nice, okay, so just to give you guys a little bit of a, a sort of backstory, like I said. So what we found, right, in New Zealand and on our, our courses was we, we had quite a lot of candidates who were sort of skiing down to us and they were saying, was that it? Or am I better? You know, and they were sort of giving us these sort of statements that led us to believe that they didn't quite have an understanding about what it is they were trying to achieve. Because whenever we would try and engage them, and as I said, that engaged learner, sort of a key word for us, right? There's someone who participates, who wants to take ownership and make it be involved in decision making for the, for the betterment of their learning. Um, we found that, you know, when we tried to engage them in that sort of reflective process, that they, they weren't, they weren't, you know, working with us the way we would have liked to, right? And we felt like what that created was a bit of turbulence or a bit of space between us because they really wanted us to just tell them, you know, just tell them, give it to me, I'm a feedback junkie, you know, give, give me what I want, give me, give me what I want. And we're saying, no, 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 you know, we, we want you to be involved in this process, to have some ownership so that when you go away, you know what you're trying to do when you practice on your own, you know? So that was sort of what we, what we were getting and, and it was, you know, I guess the inspiration and the motivation for us to try and make a change. So if I take us quickly back to 2019 in Pomporovo at the Interski there, we presented a new teaching, new teaching model, okay, or a teaching cycle as we actually call it, which, which basically used a bit more uh, of the experience, like sort of brought to the forefront David Kolb's experiential learning cycle. You know, I mean, a lot of nations use that sort of experiential cycle. So we implemented that in 2019. It's been a big success. Uh, but also what we did is we set different definitions, 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 right, for our turn phases. So we've got a three-phase system in New Zealand, right? The, uh, the words are initiation, control, and completion. And actually they're changing this year to uh, create, control, and release. Right, and so what we did is we defined the ski and body performances that we want in each phase. And we did that in 2019 <coughs> at Pomporovo. And it was sort of the beginning of our journey to create clarity of outcome. Right, so that when we're talking, when we're working with our candidates, we're all singing the same songs. Right, we're reading from the same playbook. You know, so that was sort of the beginning of our, our journey in 2019. 
right, was to create clarity. And it started with the phases of the term, okay? Now, as you can imagine, there's a lot of sort of detail, depth of information that goes on here, okay, or there can be. So we've refined it a little bit, and that's what I'm gonna sort of talk about when we get up to the, uh, the top of the next lap, okay? We're gonna create some clarity of outcome, as we call it. So that's a bit of a backstory, sort of what led us to here right now, okay? Because we wanna make things accessible, and, and you know, we wanna make things easy, as easy as we possibly can for our candidates on course. Right to follow along. So the journey started here because we were receiving some feedback from the candidates that they they weren't able to engage in a reflective experience with us. Okay, so that's sort of what where's, that's what has led us here. Okay, let's uh, let's enjoy the the snow down to the lift. When we get up, we'll crack into the clarity of outcome. Okay. All right. Josh. It. Josh. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask you something? How would you say in Italian clarity of outcome? In Italian? Yeah. Uh, because I'm not getting the, the concept. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, maybe you can try to. I had to write it down. Um, clarity of outcome. So, understanding okay. of uh, result. Maybe. So, uh, the candidates of the ski instructor training course, they need to know what, what they are going to achieve. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. So, like, understand that well. Okay. Yeah, that's clarity about okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, all good. For, for us, right, clarity of outcome is, uh, or uh, Fabio and San Marino, like uh, understanding of the result, like what's to be achieved, yeah? Um, so for us, that, uh, it is grounded in the belief and in the knowledge of um, Fitz and Posner's skill acquisition stages, right? So cognitive, associative, and autonomous. Right, so what we're talking about is we are really, when we set up an activity, that's what we call this, Bayesi call it a task, I'm uh, not 100% what the other nations call it, but when we set up an activity, we're really trying to create a good understanding of what it is, right, what it is we want them to do, okay, and what does success look like. Those are our two key points when we create clarity, what it is and what does success look like okay so that they have a mental image they go okay I understand if I close my eyes I can see it and they go you know I, I understand the, the sort of external parameters so when we create clarity the what it is is ski performance speed and corridor ski performance speed and corridor okay we don't get too we don't get deep into body performances yet Okay, it does come, but not yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up an example of a uh, dynamic medium radius for us, okay, for, for New Zealand. Um, and I'm going to explain what we want you to do, and then I'm going to demonstrate success to you. Okay? Um, so what we want is a three groomer width sort of corridor. I think that's roughly around 12 to 15 meters across the hill. Now, I'm on a slalom ski today, so it might pull a bit narrower, okay? In New Zealand, we mainly use, you know, what the San Marino guys are on and girls are on. Is that like sort of middle carver? Same as the German there. Uh, you know, we've sort of got that, I don't know, I call it a middle radius ski. It's like, I don't know, 16, 17 meters. So, we would probably do a slightly larger corridor in New Zealand, okay? But for today, it's gonna be two to three. Okay, the speed is uh, fast, right? You need to travel with a pace that allows you to move inside the turn, creating high levels of ski performance. 
okay, we would ideally see two lines in the snow. Okay, on a day like today where we've got variable conditions on the piece, might be hard to see that, okay, but we ideally want two lines in the snow. The shape of the turn is created through <coughs> ski design, through use of ski design and ski performance, okay, so tipping it up onto its side. So what we want is clarity or understanding around those sort of external factors, okay, without any sort of body performances just yet. Okay, so go fast, three groomer widths, make it round through carving, two lines in the snow. Autonomous supportive teaching, you don't, you don't necessarily need to understand that, word, that phrasing, but what we're going to do is I'm going to allow you guys, I'm going to give you the students, let's say hypothetical students, give you a choice. So you make a choice that you believe is going to best serve your development, your learning. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to start from here. This is where my demo starts. My demo is going to finish sort of down on that roll. Okay, so we'll go down this pitch and sort of de like just turn to the next roller. Okay, you guys position yourself anywhere you like between here and the end point on the roll. It's totally up to you where you want to watch my demo from. Every one of my students, hypothetical students now, is going to see my demo, but it's your choice where you watch it from. Okay? I've obviously been talking too much as JF is gone. <laughs> but uh, I'll just say one more thing. This, encour <laughs> this, this encourages... Uh, good on you, JF. Good on you, JF. Yeah, he's positioning where he wants to Yeah, he's positioning. But, um, you know... What this encourages, I'll just say this final point, autonomous supportive teaching encourages the students to enter into a mindset of making their own decisions that they believe are going to impact their learning in a positive way. So it's starting to create that engagement that we want in New Zealand. <laughs> Nice, okay. So, I, you know, I try, tried my best there. Definitely the conditions on the day don't necessarily dictate a super amazing sort of medium carved turn. But uh, hopefully you started to see a little bit of what it is that we're trying to do in New Zealand in, in the external factors, right? So, look, we wouldn't ask our candidates to skate into the run. I was just doing that because all of you guys are here and I wanted to try and show off. <laughs> well done. But, uh, well done. But, um, but um, you know, so like we set up clarity of the external factors, you know, speed, corridor, ski performance. Okay, and then we try and show them success. And again, we use that autonomous support of teaching. We're trying to use it more and more because we believe it's, it's, a, it's a simple thing you can do. You're not giving the, the candidates total freedom. Everyone has to watch the demo. Like you're setting the parameters, but as much freedom as you can within those parameters, we believe in New Zealand, will give the students more, and get more engagement from the students, right? So they'll be more willing and be able to tap into that intrinsic motivation, right? So, uh, you know, one of the things, I'll just share a little anecdote that I find when I set this up well with, with candidates on snow, is that they always say, they're always like ready to go. They're like, they watch the demo and they're like, I want to try it. So, you know, like for me, I know my job at that point, like at that point in time, my job is essentially now, cool, I, I can step back almost. Because you ask, they are so focused on what they want to do. They want to try and copy that demo. They understand the speed, the size, the performance, and they just want to do it and do it and do it. And so the, I know that when I get that, I've sort of done my job in setting up that, that clarity of outcome. Okay, let's, uh, let's give it a go. Let's try some mediums. Uh, if you want to do short turns, uh, then by all means do it, because snow, like I said, is a bit challenging for mediums. What we'll do is we'll ski down here. We'll go over this little roll where the German group is. And you see there's the sort of next group on the right-hand side on the flats. We'll just sort of stop there, okay? I'll go first. 
and uh, we will start to talk about how we sort of use a feedback model. Uh, where were we before the definitions of the three phases? For us, there was kind of like a, I don't know, maybe this is the wrong way to explain it, but it, it sort of was a bit of like a, a common understanding, like a, you know, a shape, you know, nod of the head. You understand what you're doing? Yes. Do you understand? It? Yes, we understand what we're doing. You know, but like you wouldn't want to challenge anyone on it too much, right? And I'm not saying by any means that we didn't understand, you know, what good skiing was, but it wasn't it wasn't written down in a way that our candidates could access the information and go, well, this is exactly what we're trying to do, you know, in these three phases. And we're adding a little more depth to that when we bring out our new manual, which is coming uh, this summer in New Zealand, where basically the phases of the turn are, are malleable. So they can get longer, they can get shorter, they can change place. So right now in the uh, Endonese manual, the phases of the turn are sort of geometric locations in an arc. And where we're moving to, let's say, let's say this is like a, an ideal medium radius. You know, you've got the control phase here, sort of that like shaping phase in the States. Um, you've sort of got this here. Let's say we're doing a wedge turn. The control phase is going to be down here. That's where you're creating the shape of the turn. Right, so we're, we're continuing to expand on that in the new manual, right, as, especially as we go, um, as, yeah, as we move forward, that's where we're going. But you always had initiation, control, control completion. It was always those three. Always those three. You're, yeah, okay. Yeah, always those three. So what we're doing is we're going to change the names yep. to try and help the membership not freak out too much. Because if we keep the names the same and then we say the phases move now, they're going to be like, whoa, that's a lot of the same but you're asking it in a different way so we're keeping control phase because we like that I mean we like that name but create is now going to be the start and release, and release. instead of instead of yeah, yeah. completion okay cool so uh, feedback so what we what we'll do like what we do we create clarity or understanding of the result and uh, then what we do we obviously have to get them to try it to have an experience okay one, two, however many sort of pitches they need. And then you're going to be gathering information. You're going to be, we watch them, okay, obviously. And, uh, and then we start to engage in a feedback process. So our feedback process, what we believe is that it's really going to sort of continue this uh, engagement or strengthen, deepen this two-way communication and uh, I guess willingness to sort of what we call taking control of their learning. Okay, so it's a three-stage model. It's called seek, give, seek. Okay, seek, give, seek. The first part of the model, the first seek, is all about asking sort of specific questions, right, specific questions that are relative to a performance outcome that, that you have discussed already. So just to give you, I'll give you a little bit of a, an anecdote, sort of backstory, right, is a little pet peeve of ours is when we hear our trainers on the hill use the question, how was that? How was what? <laughs> You know, like how was what, <laughs> what it, what was what. You know, like well, how did that feel? How did how did what feel? You know, like uh, PSA doing with the people skills, situation, behavior, and impact. There has to be so, there has to be that situation for the behavior and the impact to, to have you know validation, right? So, it's for us asking questions has to be relative to the performance that you've set. Okay, so that's the first seek, right? Now, for instance, an example of that in a medium radius today would be, I mean, okay, let's say we have groomers, just for now, because this example's come to my head, but it would be, you know, can you see two lines on the piece? Can you see two tracks left in the snow? Right, so that's a, that's a factual piece of evidence that's non-judgmental, right? The goal for us of feedback, the goal for us is to deliver accurate information on our students' performance that is non-judgmental 
and so maintains the relationship between the trainer and the candidate. That's our goal with feedback, okay, is to maintain that relationship, right? So we try to be as non-judgmental as possible. So do you see two lines? You know, let's say uh, we use a lot of video, right? So we'll take the phone out and we'll say, if you look at this video, does it look like the turn shape is round? Does it look like the turn shape is in a consistent corridor? What we're doing with the first seek is we are always asking a question that is relative to a performance, one of those external factors that we have already set up. <coughs> That's how we set this model off well. I'll just give a sort of a, a I'll give a little, little more information then we'll go down the run, is there is such an important link between clarity of outcome and the, the seek give seek feedback model. If you have not created an understanding of the result, right? If you haven't created that understanding, that clarity, seek, get, seek give seek does not work. Because you will be asking questions like, what was that? You know, or how, how, how did that feel? You know? And for us, how did that feel? How was that? Is a little bit of a communication breakdown between the student and the learner, it sort of disengages a little bit, okay? So the first seek is about specific questions relative to the performance, with the goal being to sustain the relationship between the trainer and the candidate, so the experience is, is still there, you know, so there's still some trust, okay? Let's, uh, let's ski down, we'll try some more mediums on the way down to the chair. We'll regroup at the bottom of the chair, Thank you, JF, you can go, it's all good. <laughs> we'll ski down. To the, we'll regroup at the bottom of the chair. Okay, and we'll just talk about give. All right, so we're on to the uh, give piece of the feedback model, right? So seek specific questions relative or based off the performance that we set. Okay, non-judgmental, non-judgmental. Okay, with the give piece of feedback, for us, we call this moment in time, or we, we have a, a, a sort of, a phrase for it where we anticipate turbulence right so we understand in New Zealand that when you're giving people feedback there is a chance that they can disengage retract they can have an emotional response to the feedback okay because they really maybe they really believe that they were performing something differently and you're giving them but even if it's as factual as you can make it sometimes the the sort of the hammer dropping on them that sinking feeling of like, I'm not doing it, you know, can, can create an emotional response. And what we call that is, is trying to anticipate turbulence. So we have a tool for that. And the tool is titled, How Not To Get Shot. How Not To Get Shot is the title of our giving portion of feedback. So what we're trying to do in this sort of period of time where we're delivering the feedback is we are trying to create um, exterior points of reference to deliver the information that doesn't jeopardize or you know upset the relationship that Fabi and I have. So if I were to deliver Fabi feedback and I were to just look right and dead in the eye and just drop the hammer on him that he's you know not performing what we asked there could be turbulence, Fabi could disengage, and he could take it very personally. So what we try and do is create the third point of reference. So for instance, that would be, okay, Fabi, let's think here, right, in this middle phase of the turn, what we're trying to do. Can you remember, what are we trying to do here? You know, basically, I'm taking, and I'm sure probably all of you guys just, almost subconsciously, you just, did you all glance down to the snow? Yeah where I was drawing, yeah? So we're creating a place for the feedback to live. The feedback for us, at the beginning, at the beginning, the feedback does not live in this space. We try and have the feedback live here. So away from our relationship, right? So that we can continue to preserve that trust, that relationship that we have with our candidates. Okay, another place that we, we put it is on video. 
Right, video is a great tool because it's literally just them skiing down and you're just, look, both of you guys, we're looking at the video screen, scrolling through it, pausing it. Look, but we're, we're both, our gaze is both here. The other thing we try to do is what we call sort of neutral language. So stay away from the use, you know, like try and, and just be a bit more um, in our language, be very ski performance sort of based. Right, so the performance of the skis in this phase of the turn was drifted. What we need to see on the next run is that the ski performance through this phase of the turn is carved. What that will look like, or, or you know, then you might ask a question, what do you think that might look like? And then they would say, well, two lines in the snow. Perfect, let's go up and let's try it again. So we're trying to have a sort of, you know, um, neutral language, okay, and try and create a third point of reference where the feedback or where the turbulence can live. So we're trying to anticipate that, and for us, we call it how not to get shot. Objective. Yeah, definitely, and we're gonna, we're gonna start to come. There was a great question here, it was just, you know, we talked, like you asked specific questions based off video and the performance, and, um, you know, can you ask questions and sort of get into the feelings that the, the candidate had on the run? You definitely can, and that, that comes into the second part of SEEK. So SEEK, specific questions, factual, non-judgmental, give. Trying to, again, keep the rapport going while you deliver evidence, you know, on video or away from the relationship or relation from your, you know, the partner. And um, the second SEEK is all about, the goal of it is all about creating uh, two-way communication and a dialogue where together your candidate and the trainer make decisions that are gonna you know progress the progress the lesson right so to answer your question on feelings that could be you know hey something I noticed first seek oh, so on the give let's go give right so something I noticed coming down there was the outside ski was was not on the snow during this top phase of the turn the outside ski was in the air. What do you feel when you are balanced on the outside ski? What do you feel inside your boot? Well, I, whatever it might be, you then say you're perfect. Let's try and feel that right up here now. That is, the, that is your specific focus, is to take that feeling but have it right from the start. So you're, you're engaging them, right? and you can get into what they feel if you know if, if, if you want to okay but you're really trying to engage in some sort of in two-way communication okay where you both come together to start to you know plan the roadmap to success that's sort of what we're doing in the second seek so first seek specific questions relative to the performance okay and for us, the reason that we take so long, I mean, it takes so long is a relative term, but the reason that it may seem like we take a bit of time to get to that specific feedback is because in New Zealand, we really believe that we want to connect before we correct, right? We want to connect with them, have that relationship and that trust before we correct. Okay, so connect before we correct, right? And so first seek is specific questions relative to the performance, maintaining the relationship. Give, you're giving feedback, but you're trying to give the evidence away from just looking at them. And then the second seek is all about two-way communication, okay, and working together to make decisions that will, you know, lead to the success or the development of the student. Okay, so we believe that feedback process with the clarity of outcome is going to create a more engaged learner and someone that has, oh sorry, more engaged learner and um, a better ex experience on snow, right? And for us as examiners in the NZSA, what we're doing is we're trying to model this behavior. We're trying to model it with our candidates, okay? And then we're hoping that through time, through repetition of this, they will then use it with their students at the end, uh, the end result. We're currently in a process of, try of, of figuring out how we can layer this into, into our assessment process. 
okay? But this, that's still a, a work in progress. We've got a new manual coming out and hopefully that will start to give us some of the answers, okay? Um, but really, we're, just, we're trying to model this behavior. Okay? I can see we're getting cold a bit. So, uh, what we're gonna do is, let's f find a pair, okay, find a pair, and in your pair, take half the run where one of you is the instructor, okay? Do a medium radius, the, the partner comes down to you, and try and use the seek give seek feedback model, try not to get shot, and deliver some feedback. It can be successful, it does not have to be critical feedback. It can be, you know, Richard, middle of the turn, you know, fantastic. Two lines were left in the snow, it's perfect, it's beautiful, it's what we want. Okay, let's try it again. You know, can we go faster, can we tighten the radius? Right, do you believe, Richard, that you could make that turn with a, in a slightly narrow radius? And Richard says, you bloody well know I can. <laughs> so let's do it. <laughs> you know, so... It's, um, so let's sort of pair up. Try and find someone who's not from your, you know, not a fellow countryman. And um, we understand what the activity is yep. and what we're trying to do. Is everyone sort of clear on the takeaways, clarity of outcome, and the feedback? Okay, perfect. All right, I'll let you guys get into pairs and we'll regroup up here. I guess I cut, cut a really good question from Annette, Annette here, who was just saying, do you ever get people when you set this up who just come in? Oh, sorry, guys. Um, who just who come come into that feedback process and they say, um, you know, you ask them, you know, hey, reflect on your experience, and they say, I did it, right? When they weren't, you know, they weren't, and yes, it does happen. It does happen, and but it's a, it's a process in which you have to be okay with giving the facts, and that's why it's like it's non-judgmental. We try to take it away from the examiners or the trainers, um, just personal opinion on their skiing and make it more factual, use video, and just direct it so that they're here, so we can see the skis we're skidding in this part of the turn. You know, so I guess video would probably be the biggest tool we have for, for something like that, someone who really wasn't understanding. Um, and just before I get you guys to sort of share a reflection that you had on the experience, I just wanna say that the goal of going through this uh, feedback process and creating clarity of outcome Initially, like we said, it's grounded in skill acquisition. So for us, throughout this process, we want our students, our candidates, to have an awareness of their body performances and how they use their body to create a difference in ski performance. Like we're trying to build them to that associative phase of skill acquisition. We're trying to get them to understand that their body performances, the way they move, it's going to impact the ski in a different way, or create a different performance. And that's, that's the sort of link that we're trying to get to sort of through this process. And we believe that that learning has to come from within, and it can't be us trying to prescribe them. We have a little phrase that we use sometimes, and it's like, we call it remote control pass. So I'm, I'll try and give you a bit more context. So on an, on an exam, you're sort of telling, you know, you're really like, okay, make sure you do this, you do this, you do this, swing the pole, whatever it might be, X, X, Y, Z. And it feels like, as the examiner, you're remote controlling them to get the passing mark. And then when they're done, they've passed, you throw the remote control away, and they haven't actually gotten any better. Because it's not, it's not their learning, it's not their connection or their, um, you know, understanding of that associative, what their body's doing and how they control it to adapt or change the ski performance, right? So clarity of outcome, right, sets them up to then engage in the seek, give, seek feedback, and then hopefully we'll get them to somewhere where they really have control of their own learning and, and that association of body to ski performance. So, if anyone has a reflection they'd like to share with the group, go ahead, if not, you can hang it, you know, give me, uh, pass it on to me uh, privately afterwards. Um, I'm here for any questions, as, uh, as, you, as you, if you want to have any questions afterwards, or any interviews or anything like that for any write-ups you're doing. But uh, apart from that, we're, we're pretty much all done. So, I would, honestly, I would, I would love if you have some reflections. I was having a good chat on the chair with, um, 
a couple of guys, Christian and Felipe. Yeah. Yeah, so Christian and Felipe were having a good chat on the chair and, and they were sharing their sort of reflections and experience with the task, with the activity. So if anyone else would like to share it with me, I'd love to hear it. If anyone has feedback on the presentation, the workshop, then again, I'd love to hear it. Always trying to learn. So yeah, but apart from that, thank you guys. You've been awesome. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much.